What do insects really see? Since the compound eyes of insects are comprised of a mosaic of small facets, the popular media likes to represent insect mosaic vision like this. However, insects actually see this. Let us examine the structure of the insect compound eye and learn how the compound eyes visualize the landscape for insects. The main visual structure of insects is the compound eye. The compound eye appears to be comprised of many hundreds or thousands of tiny facets. Each facet is actually the corneal lens for an individual photoreceptor unit called an ometidium. Let us look at the detailed structure of an ometidium. An ometidium is divided into light gathering and light detecting components. The corneal lens is transparent cuticle that is secreted by two modified epidermal cells called corneogen cells. Corneogen cells secrete the corneal lens when new cuticle is formed at the time of the molt. The corneogen cells secrete the corneal lens, then later differentiate into the primary pigment cells. Below the corneal lens is the crystalline cone. This structure is either secreted or formed by four cells called Semper's cells. Light enters the corneal lens and is focused on the light detecting apparatus by the crystalline cone. The light detecting apparatus of each ometidium contains seven to eight light sensitive photoreceptor cells called retinula cells. Retinula cells are actually photoreceptor neurons that detect wavelengths of light. The light-sensitive dendritic region of the retinula cell is the rhabdomere. Together, all of the individual rhabdomeres are referred to as the rhabdome. Rhabdomeres consist of parallel microvilli containing light-detecting visual pigment molecules embedded into their plasma membranes. Light entering the cornea and cone of an ometidium is focused on and detected by visual pigments embedded in the rhabdomere membranes of the retinula cells. Retinula cells are surrounded by 12 to 18 secondary pigment cells so that each ometidium can be functionally isolated from its neighbors. Ometidia sit on a basement membrane in the retina and axons from the retinula cells combine below the membrane to form the optic nerve that leads to the protocerebrum of the insect brain. Let us see how insect compound eyes function to detect light and perceive visual information. Insect species that are active during the daytime, when light is abundant, have photopic ometidia in their compound eyes. The photopic ometidium was earlier called an apposition ometidium because the base of the crystalline cone is in direct contact, or as it were, in apposition to the rhabdome. In photopic ometidia, incoming light is focused on the base of the crystalline cone and directly onto the rhabdome, the light-sensitive sensory region of the retinula cells. Light rays that enter the corneal lens at angles are absorbed by screening pigments located in the cytoplasm of the pigment cells that surround photopic ometidia. The importance of the screening pigments is seen best from the perspective of the retina. The screening pigments prevent light entering at angles through one ometidial lens from activating the rhabdome in adjacent ometidia of the retina. Light entering the corneal lens of an ometidium stays within that ometidium. In photopic eyes, each ometidium serves as an individual visual unit for viewing only that portion of the visual scene that is directly in line with the ometidium's position within the compound eye. Next we will compare 
the structure and function of the photopic eye of day-active insect species to the eye of night-active insect species. Amatidia in the compound eyes of nocturnal insects are referred to as scotopic amatidia. The structure of scotopic amatidia is similar to that of photopic amatidia, except that scotopic amatidia appear to have an open space, referred to as the clear zone between the crystalline cone and the retinula cells. The clear zone actually contains transparent crystalline tracts that arise from the retinula cells and extend to the crystalline cone. The crystalline tracts act as light guides. In scotopic amatidia, incoming light is focused on the base of the crystalline cone and conducted to the rhabdome by the crystalline tracts. Unlike photopic amatidia, scotopic amatidia are sensitive to the changes in light intensity that occur during the day and night cycles and they detect light differently during the light and dark phases of the daily circadian cycle. During the daytime, when light is abundant, scotopic amatidia detect light similar to photopic amatidia. The shielding pigments in the secondary pigment cells of scotopic amatidia absorb light rays that enter the corneal lens at an angle, and each amatidium detects light independently of neighboring amatidia, just as in photopic amatidia. However, as night approaches and the intensity of light decreases, the shielding pigments of scotopic amatidia contract upward toward the distal end of the secondary pigment cells. Distal contraction of the shielding pigments in scotopic amatidia opens the basal portion of the pigment cells so that light entering the diopteric apparatus of one amatidium can pass through that amatidium and strike the rhabdomes in adjacent amatidia. In this manner, scotopic amatidia interact cooperatively to form multiple superimposed images on the rhabdomes of neighboring amatidia. This interaction compounds the sensitivity of the scotopic amatidia to light. Because scotopic amatidia form multiple overlaid images on adjacent amatidia, the scotopic amatidium is sometimes referred to as a superposition amatidium. The superimposed images are probably poorly defined, but detailed vision is less critical to nocturnal insects than is the enhanced ability to detect dim light. Hence, the night phase superposition compound eye has low visual acuity, but high light sensitivity. Let us observe how the shielding pigments react in the scotopic amatidia of the retina during several light and dark cycles to illustrate the interactions between adjacent amatidia. Next, we will see how the mosaic eye perceives the visual scene. Let us now enter the compound eye and see the world as viewed by an insect. Here is how the world might appear to an insect from within a single amatidium. Each amatidium views the visual scene according to its position in the compound eye and the width of its lens. The view from each amatidium is then integrated by the nervous system to provide a view of the entire visual scene. Here is the mosaic view as observed by an insect with this type of eye. 
The lens and cones of insect Ametidia are not capable of changing their focal length, so insects are probably nearsighted and distant objects appear blurry. Note that the observed scene is most distinctive when broken patterns caused by the edges of structures occur within the field of view of a single Ametidium or between adjacent Ametidia. Notice how conspicuous the pattern is when it has sharp contrasts of light and dark within the field of view of a single Ametidium. Conversely, the scene is least distinctive when a nearly similar pattern occurs within the field of a single Ametidium or between adjacent Ametidia. Likewise, movement within the field of a single Ametidium is poorly observed but movement across the field of several Ametidia provides a high degree of sensory input. Here is how something close might appear as it moves past. Note that the most information is provided as it cuts across the fields of adjacent Ametidia. Finally, let us juxtapose a compound eye from a species such as a dragonfly that has many more Ametidia per unit area. Note that by increasing the number of Ametidia per unit area, a greater number of individual Ametidia detect broken patterns within their field of view as compared to the single larger Ametidium. Since each Ametidium acts as a visual unit, this has the effect of increasing the detail or resolution that the insect can detect in its field of view. Note how many Ametidia the flying insect crosses in this situation. This increases the sensitivity of the dragonfly's eye to the presence of its prey. Therefore, insect vision is developed to be most sensitive to changing patterns in movement rather than to a highly resolved, detailed view of the visual scene, such as is found with the vertebrate eye.